In this video, I'll be talking through how I made this Wolverine character. If you want an in-depth guide, you can follow my character course, or for more general guides, I have lots of playlists on this channel and my website for all levels of Blender users. All the links are in the description. This video and model for that matter is made possible by the sponsors of this channel, Nvidia and PC Specialist. They were kind enough to give me this lovely machine here, which makes a huge difference to my workflow and what I'm able to achieve in Blender and every other creative program I use. You can see here how much difference the RTX 3090 card is making as I reposition the camera and viewport in my scene and how it's practically rendering my model almost in real time with their RT cores and AI tensor cores combined with using optics in Blender. It means I can play with the textures and lights and get instant feedback and in the end produce better quality and faster renders. PC specialists are an Nvidia Studio partner and leading system builders selling a range of customizable PCs that perform amazingly with Blender. They specialize in custom PCs and laptops for creators and gamers. So configure your next Nvidia RTX system using PC specialists online configurator. And once again, for those that are interested, here are my machine specifications on the screen now. The RTX card being the most essential thing in my opinion. So thanks to Nvidia and PC specialist for making this all possible. So let's get started. The character itself isn't low poly as such. It's kind of mid poly. The hair is still fairly high poly. I didn't really want to try and decimate that too much and lose detail. With a bit more work, I could have probably brought the poly count down to under 60,000. I'll take you through the whole process. I did start with a very basic sketch, a really, really rough sketch to start off with, and then I trace over it later on. I just do a simple front and side, so nothing too complicated, and you can see that I just trace around the outline in the end. If anybody wants to try and follow along, then I'll put these in a link in the description. I imagine there's better ones online, but I always like to do most things by myself. I then obviously bring those into Blender and kind of trace around them by blobbing out a mesh like this. I was trying to keep fairly free with these blobs uh, rather than doing more a structured approach with lots and lots of different separate objects. I tended to try and stick to bigger objects this time just for an experiment. I still haven't really decided whether that worked or not and I think it's just a matter of taste more than anything in terms of time saving or anything like that. So bigger blobs or smaller blobs doesn't really make too much difference, but I would suggest kind of using separate blobs like this for the arms, the, the chest, the trunk and so forth, because it is a much easier process than trying to start off with just, let's say, a sphere and trying to pull arms and legs out of that. Do use separate objects when you're sculpting characters or anything for that matter. Like this shoe here, I'm actually making the mesh rather than trying to use a single blob and create a shoe out of it. It is far easier if you have some sort of modeling skill, then you can create the base of the object first and then start sculpting. Now that I've got that base mesh, I can start going in and adding that first level of detail. So some of the muscular structure and things like that. I have lots of reference images for this on a different screen. I didn't need to go too detailed for the chest because I'm having a vest over the top, but I use that base structure later on for the actual vest. I also cut out the neck and used my model for the neck so I didn't have to kind of remake anything there. And you don't really notice that the head isn't actually attached to the neck in the final model. It doesn't make too much difference. If you want to learn how to model a head which is slightly stylized, then do look at my other tutorials on this. And if you want to see me model a head of Wolverine, then do check out that link as well. So for the vest, I use the mask extract tool. So you paint a mask and then you sort of press a button which is mask extract and it creates a new object for you and then I remesh that using the quad remesher which I'm afraid is a paid for add-on. It's absolutely fantastic so that's the one add-on that's paid for that I use quite a lot. I try as much as possible to keep away from paid add-ons so that you the viewer doesn't have to go out and spend loads of money but that is one that I really would recommend getting if you're going to do characters and things. It does make your life a lot easier. Having said that, if I was going to sell this character or I was making it for a client, I'd have to do some proper retopology. So the quad remesher might not quite cut it because it's not good topology as such. It's kind of okay topology that does a really quick job. So you can see that I've gone up a level of detail now for the trousers and I did remesh them to a finer detail in order to do that. And I'm using the crease brush quite a lot to create those creases and sharp edges as well. So I use what I call the reverse crease brush. That's holding down control whilst using the crease brush for those sort of 
sharp pointy bits. Now the hands, I thought actually it's going to be much better if they're in a fist because I want the claws of Wolverine in there. So I repositioned all of the fingers and then remeshed them. That kind of bound them together so it wouldn't be animatable if you wanted the hands to move, but let's say a game character or something like that, that wouldn't be so bad. Then remeshed a bit finer and started adding that bit of detail. Again, the crease brush is a really important brush to me, so I used that an awful lot in that particular part of the model. And you can see me remeshing a bit finer there, going across to the crease brush and the grab brush, moving things about and creasing them. Then across to the body to do a bit more detail on the muscular structure. I'm still working on the stylization aspect of it because obviously there's a huge amount of exaggeration in the muscular structure and getting that right with the right sort of lines and sharpness and things is quite a tricky business. One of the key things that I think at the moment is uh, overlapping the muscle structures. So you can see the forearm overlapping the top of the arm quite a lot there and really over exaggerating that aspect. You can kind of make the muscles much bigger and more pronounced. It's worth saying that the vest, although it's a separate object, it doesn't have to be as such. You could just kind of draw it on top of the chest. I do think it's much easier to make it as a separate object though. And of course, as you can see, I didn't model the legs, so you can just model the trousers on their own and that's fine. Now for the shoes, I could have used a multi-resolution modifier, so you can see me modeling the shoes fairly precisely here. And yes, so I could have added a multi-resolution modifier to that and it may have been a little bit better because I would have had access to that low poly model. Having said that, the remesh option does give you a bit more power. If you want to know more about that, the difference between Dime Topo, Remesh and the multi-resolution modifier, then do check out my sculpting playlist and the video on that specific subject. Now, one slight mistake I made here is that you can see a little bit of blobbiness around the place, especially in the crevice. And I probably should have gone up in detail much sooner. And you can see my face count is only at 73,000 in the corner there. So most of the time I'm a real advocate of going as low poly as possible when you're sculpting to get the shape. But when you want to get that fine detail, then you do need to up the resolution where you have to, especially around the crevices there. They did look a little bit blobby. Not that it made any difference to the final render and I do smarten them up a little bit later. It just took me a bit longer than it needed to. When adding the detail, things like creases and seams and so forth, I tend to use the draw brush to kind of mark out an area, then the crease brush to go into one side of it to sort of look like a piece of leathers folded over or a piece of materials folded over. I have seen stitches as brushes, so you can use alpha brushes for that. I just wanted to do everything as basic as possible in this and I didn't want to search around for special brushes to do that. It was hard to reach the inside of the leg, so I used the Alt B command to sort of section off an area and only sculpt on that. It's a bit like masking, but using your viewport camera in a sense. And again, I'm using that technique, using the draw brush and then kind of smoothing out one side, digging in the other to add that idea of folds in the material. For the belt, I did start off with a mirror object just to line it up. And then I broke the mirror to create that extra strap going across there. And the belt buckle, for some reason, I use the most convoluted way to create it. But sometimes you just have to start modeling and then you think, actually, there's a better way. And then you just start doing it the other way. So it doesn't always end up being the most effective way you got there, but you got there in the end. Some people like to really plan out their model meticulously, but I like to just get in there and start modeling and then change it up if I need to. You can see also I'm jumping around the shape a bit. I haven't done much of the back at the moment, so I start doing that. It's fairly normal for me to jump all over the place and as I see things I start working on them and then I see something else and start working on that. For the claws I just used the plane and extruded it with a solidify modifier there as well. I use a solidify modifier for the vest as well and later when I up the detail I use a multi-resolution modifier with it which as I've said before in other videos it's a great advantage of the multi-resolution modifier that you can put other modifiers on top of it. I use a simple boolean to cut out holes in the belt when you want to put holes in objects, that really is kind of the only way. You can't really sculpt out a hole. That's not how sculpting works. So you will have to use the Boolean for that. Again, I could have used the multi-resolution modifier on the belt and that probably would have been a better result than just remeshing it like I did. But it doesn't matter too much. It didn't make too much difference. One thing I haven't experimented much with is the cloth brushes. I just tend to sculpt the creases. I think they look okay. I suppose for tight objects, it's probably better to do that. And maybe for flowing objects, using the sculpting brushes would be a good idea. 
At this point, you can see me remeshing all the objects, so they're a lower poly version of the high poly version, and then baking the materials from one to the other. I did mark seams with a automatic unwrap at first, and then thought, actually, that's a bad idea, and started doing it uh, properly, should we say, by marking the seams myself to get better islands. The problem with the Smart UV Project is that you sometimes get, with higher poly meshes, which these are slightly higher, you sometimes get your islands overlapping each other. So if you have a clean unwrap, like I've kind of got here, it is much better in terms of nice big islands that aren't kind of confused in any way. For personal projects like this, I tend to give myself a bit of a time limit of maybe a couple of days or three days. And the whole project, I think, took, uh, well, the body took about 10 hours, so the head as well, included in that, it's got to be up to about 15 hours for the whole thing. And that spanned over a few days, so I didn't add too much detail to things like the belt loops and so forth. I did realise at this point that I had forgotten to put pockets in, so I went back and did that before baking the textures on. Or it may have actually even been after baking the textures on and just rebaked them once I'd done that extra detail. I'm sure this would have been a lot quicker with some sort of seam type alpha texture brush. If you want to learn more about alpha brushes, then do check out the sculpting playlist. There's a lot of detail of that in there. Now I thought I'd show you this bit as well. Some of my cavity maps weren't baking particularly well. They were little blobs of black. And if you ever get that, you can kind of select the area that has the problem in the UV editor and map where it is on your object and just pull it out away from the high poly mesh a bit. So your low poly mesh needs to be slightly outside your high poly mesh to get a good bake. At this point, I'm just doing a little bit of painting just to add, obviously, the colour to it, a jean texture in there as well, which didn't actually go that well. I wasn't that impressed with it, so I just did a really basic job on that because I was kind of running out of time that I'd allotted for this project. But you can see me kind of trying to paint on seams here, and I even took it into Photoshop to try and make a kind of seam texture that I could use, but it was too re low resolution and really didn't work. So I used a really basic denim texture in the end. For the shoes, I just added a bit of variation, so obviously a little bit of colour difference in the sole and the leather, and I used the roughness map to kind of highlight the difference more. So the uh, sole had more uh, shininess to it than the top width of the leather, and I added a lot of variation in the roughness to the top leather part as well. I think the shoes and the belt and so forth were areas I would have liked to have spent a little bit more time and I sometimes find it quite hard to get that stylized versus realism approach and I tend to start going a bit too realistic and then try and bring it back to stylized and I end up somewhere in the middle and it doesn't quite work all the time. That's something I really need to focus on for my own personal development. The belt is another one where I think the roughness map was quite important to give it a bit of variation as if there's some shiny bits of leather but there's a bit worn it's a little bit scuffed up at this point i smartened up the hair slightly i think this is where i joined the head all together and started just making sure that it was the right size for the body i also decimated the hair and i think I, that's where i could have reduced the poly count a bit more but i wasn't too worried about the poly count i didn't want it to be in the millions which it was to start with so i brought it down a fair bit i think the whole model ended up being about 300,000 faces in the end I certainly needed to bring it down a fair bit just for the sake of rigging so it wouldn't be too laggy, although having a nice machine does help in that aspect. And at first for the rig, I was just going to do a very basic pose. So I just got the basic human from Rigify and put it in there, linked him up and put him into a pose. And then I thought it's gonna be much better with a bit of animation in there, just a little bit of movement to add a bit of life. So instead of using the basic Rigify rig, I went the whole hog and got the proper one. And you can see here how much easier it is to animate and pose because you've got the IK handles and it's so much easier to move about and put them into position and animate. And there is the final model all put together, all textured and with a simple animation on top. Do let me know if there's anything specific that you want to know about and I can do a separate tutorial on that. Let me know what you think in general, whether you like these sort of tutorial slash commentaries or if you want to see me make a specific character. I'd love to hear from you, so do comment below. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.